Hello. Recently, Gavin Newsom's been in the news talking about how California is a nation state. He's been saying that since the uh, about a week and a half uh, throughout the COVID-19 emergency. Um, yesterday, he appeared to walk that back and say, I don't really mean nation state. And so that's caused the debate amongst some of the people in the California independence movement, also known as Cal Exit, uh, from 2016, 2017. What they're saying is, well, yeah, Newsom says nation state. He's just messing with Trump. He doesn't really mean it. He's just a politician. Uh, he would never mean something so radical as independence. Um, he couldn't mean it. You know, he's just joking, just joking around. Okay, well, let's take a look. So I'm going to present some facts, things that happened that back up the point that Newsom for the last 15 years has wanted California to secede and effectively be independent from America. Uh, he does not like federal authority. He wants California to not be under federal authority, and he wants California to be seen as a nation by other nations. I will now attempt to prove that with facts. So here we go. Let's go back to 2004. Now, February 2004, something very big happened. Gavin Newsom became elected to mayor of San Francisco. Now, he had been in political office for a while, but it was small positions. Uh, mayor of San Francisco was his first big one where people noticed who he was. In February 2004, he did something radical. He said the federal government doesn't recognize LGBTQ marriage, but they're wrong. I alone, as director of the government of San Francisco, mayor, will order San Francisco government to start recognizing and issuing licenses for LGBTQ people. In fact, he did one of the first marriages of lesbians in California. Now, later on, those were struck down, but he did it. Everybody knew it was against federal law. He ignored federal law. He did it. That was on February 14th. Now, the interesting thing here is February 18th, George W. Bush, President of America, says, I saw what's going on in San Francisco and I'm bothered. So Newsom made a protest and then saw that as mayor in California, he was able to get the President of the United States government to sweat. The very next day, February 19th, the San Francisco government, under his direction, sued California to say that it, too, would have to allow LGBTQ marriages. So, he makes a statement violating federal law, blatantly. The President of America says, I see you, I do not like with that. And then Newsom doubles down and tries to get all of California to back him up. Now, Newsom said himself, literally said himself, that the reason that he filed the LGBTQ uh, marriages disregarding federal law was because he saw the President of America say that he wanted to have a federal constitutional amendment to ban LGBTQ marriage. So federal constitutional amendment is federal law. The president is saying it is federal authority. To then say, I see that and I want to completely disregard it is, well, someone who's not wedded to the idea of federal authority and following federal law. Rather, it sounds like somebody who has no problem violating federal law and doing whatever he wants and saying, well, we're California, we have California values, we're just going to do it. Let's fast forward to 2005. The World Economic Forum, because of his actions, called Gavin Newsom a young global leader. So the World Economic Forum, which is a huge global think tank, picked out this man when he's young, just started his major political career and said, you're a global leader. The world sees you. That's why I say from... 2005 to 2020, Gavin Newsom's wanted California to be a nation because when he was awarded that title by the World Economic Forum, being recognized as a global leader, it put that idea into his head. How do we know that? Well, um, 2008, Gavin Newsom had a conversation with uh, Harry Osofsky at the UC Hastings School of Law in April 2008 on the topic of climate change, adaptation, and innovation. This is in the book, Creation of International Law of Climate Change, Non-State Actors, and Soft Law, published in 2012. Harry Osofsky had a conversation with Gavin Newsom, April 2008, UC Hastings School of Law in San Francisco, top law school there, where he's from. And they're talking about climate change. And Osofsky says, isn't it great 
that um, non-states can participate in setting a global agenda. And Newsom comes back and says, no, it's not so great. The only reason that non-state actors or, or sub-nation governments, meaning California, get to participate in global issues is if they're allowed to be on a nation-state panel. Gavin Newsom, arguing with this uh, uh, student of international law, said California doesn't get respected, doesn't get its due, isn't able to influence things unless it's treated like a nation state on a nation state panel. Said that 2008. Now that's interesting because 2009, the very next year, July 30th, uh, he opens up, he proposes a United Nations Climate Change Center in San Francisco Hunters Point. Uh, he says the UN Center will create jobs far beyond where it is. So, it's called a UN Global Compact Center, Climate Change Center, Hunters Point, San Francisco, proposed by Newsom as mayor 2009, but he just calls it a UN Center. Coincidence, he had the conversation a year before, and then he proposes the world's fifth UN to be in San Francisco. Also, by the way, as mayor of San Francisco, he knows well that the original UN was in San Francisco. It's not a coincidence that he reproposed bringing the UN back to San Francisco. He knew that the first world debate place was in San Francisco, California. Uh, September 30th, 2009, after Newsom says he wants to have a new UN center placed in California, the UN formally asks the California government to host future climate change conferences on September 30th. So Newsom debates with the reporter. Hey, we don't get to do enough as Californians. We can't influence the global stage enough unless we're recognized as a nation state has that uh, topic. The next year, he proposes a UN building in California. A few months later, the UN says, good idea, we like the way you're thinking. And only two years prior, or three years prior, um, uh, four years prior, Gavin Newsom was recognized as, by the World Economic Forum as a global leader. So there's a lot of stuff going on 11 years ago that shows this guy is not thinking about running a state, being governor. He's thinking about running a nation. Okay, 2013, uh, Gavin Newsom writes the book Citizenville. Uh, now, he does talk about um, improving technology across many states, but if you read the book, he's not inspired by any states in America. The book compares California to foreign nations, and it talks about how California can do as good as a foreign nation, not Look how good Iowa and Kentucky are doing. Let's be like them. And frankly, he talks about former Soviet republics and how they've really jumped into the tech uh, infrastructure uh, Silicon age and that he was inspired by that. Read the book. He's not inspired by American states. He's inspired by foreign countries as if he wants California to be a foreign country. He traveled to foreign countries. He studied foreign countries in the only book he wrote about right before becoming governor. What's that say? 2015, in a... Interview, uh, he calls California an independent spirit. He says California is known for its independent spirit uh, to NBC um, in 2015. Now, November 21st, 2016. November 21st, 2016. He's not quite governor. He's talking about Cal Exit. And he says fondly, ah, don't worry about Trump in 2016. We dealt with George W. Bush. And California ignored what he did and we did our own things, and California was planning on stopping any federal laws that we were removed and stopping any federal funds that were removed. So in 2016, Newsom's talking fondly about challenging Trump and because he's remembering challenging Bush. And he has a smile on his face when he's talking about, yeah, the feds might pull back laws. We were going to stop them. They might pull funding. We were going to stop them. Whatever they do, we'll just undo. By the way, W. Bush was also unelected. So this is him reminiscing positively about that other time California ignored federal law, did its own thing, uh, when he's talking about Trump in 2016. Okay, now let's go to part two. So part two, we're going to take a little segue. Now, after Newsom made that November 2016 speech about CalExit, and throughout 2017 and 2018, he's largely quiet. He doesn't really say nation state independent state, challenge the federal government, anything like that. Now, two things I want to draw your attention. Spring 2018, uh, there is a report, a major 
academic report by two professors from Stanford. So, uh, David Freeman Engstrom works at Stanford Law, and Jeremy M. Weinstein works at Stanford International Studies. So Stanford University is one of the top law schools in the world. It's also one of the top uh, foreign relations uh, departments teaching uh, uh, future diplomats in the world. So Stanford has an international law scholar and a legal scholar write an article, spring 2018, called What if California had a foreign policy, published in Washington Quarterly. At that same time, also spring 2018, on February 25th, CBS San Francisco, CBS San Francisco, major station in San Francisco, this is where Newsom was mayor, Willie Brown comes on TV, former politician, and says California could be a nation state independent from America. So February, spring 2018, Stanford University has a study saying, yes, we could have a foreign policy. CBS TV has Willie Brown come on and say, yes, we could be an independent nation. And here's the thing. Newsom's mayor of San Francisco. The concept that he didn't see Willie Brown say that and he didn't see the Stanford University study and no one told him that is ridiculous. He damn well knew about those things. Also, Willie Brown started Newsom's career. The first job Newsom had was uh, appointed by Willie Brown to the Parking and Traffic Commission. So when Willie Brown goes on TV and says California could be independent, Newsom knows exactly what he said and who he was saying it to. San Francisco is where Newsom was mayor. That's where his donor base is. That's where Willie Brown made him his first political post. So he knows what Willie Brown said. The same time, Stanford University biggest university in the Bay, says, yeah, we could do this. And the idea is supposed to be Gavin Newsom didn't notice either one of those things. No. Okay, let's move on to part three. Fast forward to January 2019. Gavin Newsom becomes elected governor. His first speech, he says, powerful forces are against us. Politicians in Washington. He slams the federal government twice. And he talks about how California values have withstood assault by the federal government for 15 years. Also, there's only California flags. There's not one American flag. So the guy gets elected. His first speech slams the federal government, says there's people in the federal government that are against us, says California values have fought against them. No American flags. Accident? Let's go to January 19th. Also, that same month that he gets elected, what's one of his first acts? Single payer health care. He formally asks the federal government to redirect Medicare income taxes from the federal government to the state government. January 19th. Now, this is key because no state ever has asked for the federal government to redirect federal income tax revenue to the state. Yes, redirect federal income tax revenue to the state budget. No one has ever asked for that ever. No one ever dared to. Gavin Newsom does that month one being elected. No, it doesn't pass, but the guy has no American flags, talks about how the Fed's in our way, and then his first act is to say, I want to redirect your money to the federal government back to CA. And he's the only one that ever tried to do that. And that's just a coincidence? Okay. February 14th, San Francisco Chronicle says Gavin Newsom wants to be its own nation state. Uh, February 14th. Newsom doesn't condemn that article. It comes out in 2019, right after he's elected. Talks about him being nation state. Says the word nation state. He doesn't condemn it. Okay, now let's go to February um, 19th. So February 19th, a couple interesting things happened. Gavin Newsom, in an email to his supporter, says, We're not going to be bullied by the federal government protecting our undocumented immigrants. So... Straight up says all those people, I back sanctuary cities February 19th in an email to his followers and says we're not going to be bullied by the federal government. So I'm protecting Californians against the wishes of the federal government. That same day, February 19th, he appoints Eleni Kunalakis to be, um, he changes the role. Uh, he has Eleni Kunalakis, a former ambassador to the United Nations and Hungary, in charge of the lieutenant governor position. He rewrites the post of the lieutenant governor position to sound like a secretary of state. He creates a new committee called the International Affairs and Trade Development Interagency Commission, International Affairs, Trade Development, Interagency Group. 
That's run by Kunalakis. She's a former ambassador. First time a former ambassador has been lieutenant governor. First time the lieutenant governor description has been rechanged to secretary of state. And then you put an ambassador in charge of it. Now, here's the thing. February 19th, 2019, he does this. Let's go back to 2016. Now, in November 2016, Gavin Newsom, November 21st, he slammed CalExit and said, you know, I understand the sentiment, but I can't support it. We need to stay part of America and help America. Now, a few months earlier, Eleni Kunalakis' husband, Marcos, Eleni Kunalakis' husband, Marcos, Sacramento B, April 2nd, 2016, How to Establish California's Foreign Policy. He says the exact opposite take of Newsom. He says, yeah, we could be a nation. Uh, Marcos Kunalakis, April 2nd, 2016, by nearly any measure, California would be a formidable nation state. Gavin Newsom takes the opposite opinion of Marcos in 2016. Now, in 2019, he hires Marcos' wife, an ambassador, to act like a secretary of state in a nation to reach out to foreign nations. Almost sounds like Gavin took a stance against CalExit. Watch the video in November uh, 2016 when he says it. He got zero support from that audience of Californians about that. Marcos Kunalakis says something opposite. He's also a major policy thinker in California. And then Newsom employs his wife a few years later in an attempt to make California act like a foreign nation. Okay. As a politician, you do that. That's you conceding you lost the debate. You tried to go the opposite way, and then you went this way. Uh, April 22nd, 2019, right after being elected, he goes to San Salvador, talks to Jorge Ramos, and says California already has a separate foreign policy from America. April 19th, also that same month, <laughs> Richard Mayadich, that's Richard Mayadich, um, who wrote Proposition 26, uh, Proposition 64 in 2016. So Richard Mayadich was the person who wrote the proposition for California to have legal marijuana regard, disregarding federal law. Mayadich wrote that in a way to kind of insulate California from federal law. So Newsom appoints Mayadich, the guy who wrote the law that said California is going to do its own thing on marijuana disregarding federal law. And he did a good job of it. He appoints him as head of uh, the political, uh, politician review board. So the FPPC, Fed, Fed, uh, which investigated Yes California and found out we were not funded by Russia. Uh, FPPC, Fair Political Practice Commission, is the group that oversees all politicians. Newsom put the guy in charge of that who wrote the law that said we're going to disregard federal law. So basically, if you're a California politician and you want to act like you don't care what the feds say, the FPPC is going to do nothing against you because the new head of it is a guy who had the same attitude for three years. Coincidence? Okay, May 31st, um, Gavin Newsom invites everyone in America who wants an abortion to come to California. He says, California values don't reflect American values. We're not going to do things like America. If you want an abortion, come here. Outright telling all of America we don't have your values. January 21st, 2019, Gavin Newsom says American culture is 30 years behind Cali. America in 2019 is California in the 1990s. We're not going to put up with that. Again, doubling down on how American culture is different from California culture. It's regressive backwards and we're not tolerating it. You know, back to back, April, June, June 21st, 2019. He insults all of the media and says the national media is giving California a bad image. He doesn't say just Fox. Newsom insults all American media saying they're not being fair to California, June 21st, 2013. June 23rd, 2019, Newsom points out that homeless people come from America to California. So it's not all our own problem. August 2019, Newsom approves SB 738. That's SB 738, August 2019, called the Initiative for Californians Abroad, which will direct... Eleni Kunalakis to create 10 trade missions that when you read that language sound exactly like embassies. So he appoints a former ambassador to run a international post after he redesigned it. And then he approves a law that's going to create 10 trade offices, AKA embassies to be run underneath her in short order. 
but he doesn't mean nation. Okay. Uh, finally, um, September 26, 2019, he buys the satellite that Governor Brown said California is going to ignore federal law, do whatever it wants on climate change, and quote-unquote buy our own satellite. So Gavin Newsom backed up Brown challenging the federal government in September 26, 2019 by actually purchasing the satellite. So Brown threatened the federal government. Newsom made it a real deal, backing up Brown. And finally, October 6, 2019, California, got approved by Governor Newsom, decided that it would allow college basketball students to accept endorsements. Now, that may not seem like much, but the National Collegiate Basketball Association has rules for what endorsements uh, students can do. And they said, we're not going to allow students to accept endorsements. California said, we are. The rest of America that likes college basketball said, California, do not come up with your own laws disregarding the way all of America feels. We do not want students to have endorsement deals. And California said, we don't care what the NCAA says. We don't care what any other states say. Who cares? We're doing it our way. And if you don't like it, tough. Newsom said that. October 6, 2019. So the question becomes, I know everyone's looking at Newsom now in the last couple months. You know, we had forest fires. Then we have COVID-19 and he's saying nice things about Trump and he's walking about the stance on nation state. Look at what the guy did before now. Look at the way he's been the last 15 years. For, uh, 16 years, really, and compare that to the last five months. Past behavior is a damn good indicator of the future. Look at these facts, and then let's talk about if Gavin Newsom is serious about being a nation state or not. Because if he's not, wow, did he leave a trail of uh, situations that make it look the exact opposite over a 15-year time period? Hmm. 